Welcome to an open southern Appalachian bog. This is one of the rarest plant communities that we have in the Carolinas, and it's one of the most magnificent. To be a bog, you have to be saturated with water. We think of bogs as sort of open, spongy, wet places, and they generally are dominated down at the ground by a particular species of moss, or a particular type of moss, and that's sphagnum moss. You might know it just as peat moss, and peat defines these systems. Well, sphagnum has a number of properties that make it unique, and one is its capacity for holding water. This plant can hold many times its weight in water, and when it's dry and droughty out, you can still come in the bog and squeeze the sphagnum and actually it'll make your hand wet. A lot of times water will ring right off of it. Well, a bog in a true sense is actually what we call an ombotrophic wetland. It receives all of its nutrients and water from the atmosphere, from rain. The bogs in the southern Appalachian are fed by springs. They're seepage bogs. Usually they're found on slopes, just like we're at here. The seepage water in the ground actually hits bedrock and comes forward laterally and builds a wetland here. Now, a wetland that receives minerals and nutrients from groundwater is actually called a fen. And southern Appalachian bogs are actually what we should term poor fens because they do receive much of their water from the groundwater. These bogs are dominated by plants here that can tolerate acidic situations. Some of the plants that we have here that are in flower in May are sticky honeysuckle or clammy honeysuckle, which is actually rhododendron, rhododendron viscosum. And it gets the name sticky because those buds and the flowers are just covered with little glandular hairs. Another beautiful plant that resembles mountain laurel is a plant that's called wiki. Each one of those little hot pink flowers has those spring-loaded stamens, just like a mountain laurel that require touching to actually trip the anther to pollinate the flower. It's a beautiful plant. This one, Calmia carolina, is limited to the southern Appalachians and the coastal plain, but a close relative occurs in the northern bogs, true bogs. Two other plants that we have growing right here that also indicate a close relationship with northern bogs are cotton grass, which is an eriophorum. And if you visit true bogs up in Maine, Canada, even as far up as Alaska, you'll see species of eriophorum cotton grass up there in those bogs. It's a magnificent thing. It's not a true grass. It's actually a sedge. This one is Eriophorum virginicum, the only species that's found in the Carolinas. Another plant that we all recognize and we all eat around turkey time is cranberry. It's a relative of blueberries, believe it or not, vaccinium, and it grows as a little trailing shrub here in amongst all the sphagnum. Cranberries at one time were extremely plentiful up here in northwestern North Carolina. There's a number of place names. There's a town of Cranberry over in Ash County. There's several Cranberry Creeks, but cranberries have nearly disappeared just like most of the plants that occur in these Southern Appalachian bogs because so many of these Southern Appalachian bogs have been drained and converted to other uses. Drainage and development by man in the past century has reduced the bog wetlands in the mountains from an estimated 5,000 acres to less than 750 acres today and many of these are highly degraded. Our bogs occur in bottomlands, and here, that's agricultural land. So the hand of man has been felt in many ways. <laughs>